If I'm being honest, Twitter is really who's to blame for what's in the box. Uh, you know, blame's the wrong word. More like to thank. So before I show you what's under the box here, let me go back to the beginning and tell you how we got here. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and as you may or may not be aware, I am soon running a Kickstarter to launch a new toy line of collectible figures based on cute versions of horrible monsters. It's called Cthulhu and Friends, but the genesis of this project actually goes way back to before I even had a 3D printer. Way back then, I would make models for 3D printing and upload them on Thingiverse. And I, and I mostly did this because while I couldn't really afford a 3D printer at the time, they were much more expensive, we hadn't had the race to the bottom yet, I could make models for 3D printing using this free piece of software, this revolutionary new thing called Blender. Ooh. And to give you an idea of how long ago this really was, the first one that I uploaded, a cute version of Cthulhu, was thing number 17,000. Which, it's pretty neat that it's an even number like that, but you might not think 17,000 is a low number in terms of Thingiverse, but go look at the new uploads on Thingiverse. 17,000 is tiny, and I was there for it with a cute Cthulhu. Now, with my cute Cthulhu, I also made other characters as well, all of them based on Lovecraft and all of them uh, kind of cute. But over the years, things have changed. Blender got way better and I got better at Blender. And so occasionally I'd want to revisit some of my old projects. Now, most of them I don't revisit, but this project, this project just kept coming back to me. I mean, this print, I didn't even do. This was printed by a fan who sent it to me to say thank you. Hey, I, I literally just noticed, Dan, you signed the bottom of this. I didn't know until just now. It's just been sitting on my shelf with me going, ooh, that's neat, but thank you. In my latest revisit of them, one thing that I decided to do was to, instead of having four individual Blender files, I'd combine them all into one Blender file and use Blender's system of folders, uh, kind of like how layers work in Photoshop, and I would just hide the monsters that I didn't want to work on and just look at the one of them. I made the changes that I wanted to with them, and then I thought, you know, cute horror monsters. I could make a whole bunch of these. And I started diving into the lore of Lovecraft and asking people who were fans of Lovecraft, hey, which ones would you like to add? And pretty soon I had added four new ones. Now, Blender isn't a program for making 3D models for 3D printing. Yes, it can do that, but Blender's main function is to actually make computer animations, to make renders of them, which was actually a good thing. It enabled me to make renders of these characters before I even tried printing them, and so that's what I did. However, that's where I ran into a weird problem. Remember how I said that all of these creatures were all in the same file, and they were literally on top of each other, but they were all in their own, let's call them layers, they're not layers, but let's call them layers. They were all in their own layer, and I was only looking at the one of them. But when I hit render, I forgot that hiding something in the viewport where you're working and hiding something from the renderer are two different processes. And while I was doing the one, I forgot to do the other, and the result was an abomination of abominations. Now, I thought that this was pretty funny, so I posted it on Twitter, where the immediate response from everybody was, you need to print that. I mean, Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd, said, you need to print that, and pff, if Joel says it, I guess I gotta do it. But I couldn't just take this blob and throw it at the 3D printer. I mean, I, I suppose I could, but I wanted to do something a little bit more. I thought it would be fun to take advantage of the Bamboo Labs AMS and print it in multiple colors. But if I wanted to do all of these colors, I'd need to have like a hundred AMSs hooked up together and the purge pile on that would be massive. 
so I decided to bring the scope of this project down just a little bit. And instead of doing all eight of the characters that I had modeled, I would just do the four original characters in their new iterations stacked on top of them with each one of them being assigned to their primary color. But I couldn't just print them the size that they were going to be at the end. I mean, I suppose I could. In fact, I did. Here is all four of the original Cthulhu and Friends Series 1 monsters, all stacked together, all assigned with their own color, and, uh, I mean, it works, but it's tiny, and I really would like to do something that's a bit more of a showpiece. Should I just blow this up and make it bigger? I mean, I suppose I could do that, but, you know, part of me just hates to have a, a waste of space just sitting around. And you know what, in the past, my low poly dinos, when I made a big one of them, I actually printed it completely hollow with the thinking that I could cut a hole in the bottom and a slot in the top and I could make like a piggy bank out of this. I never have actually done that, but I could. However, doing four color printing with the Bamboo Labs AMS, there was a problem with this. Because the way that the AMS assigns the different colors is it takes and makes a body within the print that is that color that just kind of wedges itself into the print. So even if I blew this up and even if I made it 0% infill, there would still be a lot of internal walls crissing and crossing inside the inside, preventing me from having any sort of usable space inside of this thing. Now, side note, this is a lot of wasted plastic where nobody's ever going to see it. And I would love if Bamboo Labs would get rid of those internal walls, maybe just make them very short and then not draw them all the way. It just seems like a waste. But, uh, but you know what? I got to work with the system that I got. So I'm going to have to make a 3D model that is hollow. And that is a lot more complicated than it sounds just saying it. I found that 3D Builder, a program in Windows that I use often to prepare my files for sharing with other people, it cleans up non-manifold geometry and things like that, but it also had a function where it would hollow it for you. However, its method of hollowing was to kind of voxelize the model, so your hole actually ended up being a bunch of little cubes jigging and jogging on the inside, a bunch of things to have to support when you print it. Nah, that's not what I wanted. Now, Blender has the ability to take a 3D model and what they call solidify it. If it's a flat model, it will give it some geometry that you can work with, but if it's a solid model, it will theoretically just make a shell around the outside. However, Solidify runs into a lot of problems, especially if your model is high resolution and where it comes to like a point, it will oftentimes try to overlap it when it creates that thickened wall. Those, those internal walls will poke into each other and I've had problems with this in the past. However, there is a trick for getting around it. It's complicated, but here's the basic idea. You take your 3D model that you want to solidify and you make a low resolution copy of it. Then instead of using solidify, you just use a displace modifier on it and make that displace in a negative direction, however thick you want the walls. Then you use that low poly shrunk displaced version to Boolean out the hole that you want. And while it's not perfect, the low poly version of it prevents those really tight corners from overlapping each other quite as much as if you didn't do that. And I decided since I was going through all of this rigmarole that I might as well go ahead and chop off the top, make a lid, make another shrunken one that can be for making a lip on the inside of it. So the bottom is actually a little bit thicker, but it comes up to a lip. The top is a little bit thinner so that it sits on the outside of that lip. Then I took that 3D model, brought it into Bamboo Labs and started to color it. And I had to color it all by hand, but I used the mini one that I made as kind of a reference to make sure that I get all of the colors correct. And I also wanted to color the inside the right color so that as it prints, it can pr basically print a solid wall of the color for this section and for that section and for that section so that the individual models will be 
reflected on the inside. If I didn't do it this way, it would print one color on the inside and then the colors on the outside, but which color do I choose for the inside? I, I thought this was a better solution, but it was a lot more work to do. Then I loaded up my AMS unit with four colors of Polymaker Silk PLA. And I want to thank my friends at Polymaker for supplying the Silk PLA for this absolutely ludicrous project. I mean, I probably would have used Polymaker's PLA anyways because I love their product and I oftentimes just buy it on my own. But they stepped up and said, yes, we will absolutely supply you with the material that you need for this ludicrous project. So thanks, Polymaker. You guys should check them out. And after a three and a half day print making the bottom and another two and a half days making the top, it was finally finished. Drum roll, please. Look at this absolute mess. This abomination of abominations. This absolutely crazy project. Four cute Lovecraftian horrors stacked on top of each other, and thanks to the AMS system and Polymaker Silk PLA, each one of them is distinct within this mess. It turned out fantastic, and it turned out to be a pretty neat container that I can fill with things, and what am I going to fill it with? Well, what if I take some of the practice prints that I've been making in preparation for this Kickstarter and I fill this thing up and then take it with me to the LA Maker Fair and the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. And if you meet me at those events, you can have yourself a little sample packet of some of the work that I've been doing so you can get an idea of what you can get from the Cthulhu and Friends Kickstarter. See, it's not just a, a waste of space showpiece, it's also a very useful pot for putting things in. Did I just quote Winnie the Pooh? Oh, bother. Overall, I would say I'm very pleased with the way that this turned out, and I guess I have Twitter to thank for it. Thank you everybody who looked at that mess that I made and said, you gotta print that because you know what? You were right. Well, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, someone else too. See you next time.